Hello, I'm Keith Nichols. Every island in the Oasis has its own landmarks and significant natural features. From beaches and coral reefs, to seagrass beds to virgin forests. These are all called natural resources. And they provide significant important benefits and services for all of us here on these islands. We need the land for food and water and for job creation through sectors such as agriculture or tourism. But we can't do it at the expense of our beaches, our coral reefs, our exotic marine life, our mangroves. We must take care of our land, our rivers, our exotic plants, and our forests and the living creatures that exist there. We must earn a living from our natural resources. But how do we do this? Well, thankfully, we have the guidance provided by the St. George's Declaration which has been signed by every government of the OECS. The St. George's Declaration is a document which outlines goals and principles that ensure the sustainable use of our natural resources. Over the next few minutes, we will feature examples in St. Kitts, Barbuda, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Lucia and Montserrat. But first, let us visit St. Kitts and the Brimstone Hill National Park to see the value of preserving our historical sites. Brimstone Hill Fortress is a World Heritage Site and it was built in 1690. It was engineered by the British, you know, and uh, built by the African slave labor. It covers 40 acres of land and is about 800 feet above sea level. The Society for the Restoration of Brimstone Hill was founded in 1965, and that was its primary purpose, the restoration of this place. It's not um, an easy thing to maintain a historical um, structure. Um, to begin with, um, the buildings, when they were erected, the different techniques, different materials were used in their construction than are used now. And uh, to be authentic in conserving them, one has to try to replicate those techniques and replicate those materials in order for there to be an authentic structure. And uh, it's not easy and it's also, also very costly. We're here to preserve, whether it be walls, uh, buildings, uh, you know, roads. It's a very unique certainly within the context of the Caribbean, it's, it's a unique arrangement whereby a non-governmental membership organization made up of people have come together and founded and, and uh, retained membership of an organization has been entrusted by law, by legislation, to manage a national monument which belongs to the people of the country. We have been able to manage this place in a way that um, we are not dependent upon external source of funding. Um, our operations are met by the revenue that we generate here. And it's very important for us to, to, um, to generate income any way we can. And that is why we have a fee um, at the gate where, some, where everyone would have to pay a fee. Hi, good day. Welcome to the Brimstone Hill gift shop. We have here at the gift shop a wide variety of gifts, including t-shirts, um, bird feeders, uh, um, also a membership drive to um, get people to become members. And that would also help us to generate uh, more income to deal with the, the high cost of maintenance. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Kurt Richards and I'm a museum assistant slash tour guide at the Brimstone and Forges National Park. The whole country could benefit from Brimstone Hill, the musician and the artists, you know, those who paint and so on, because we, we sell prints as well, local prints. Well, legislation is absolutely essential. Any site that is considered to be of historical significance or importance to a country, whether historically, whether culturally, 
um, whether environmentally um, should be protected. But for example, if it's protected, it means that nobody should do anything in that site. Cut any bush, trap any animal, remove anything at all from that site. And therefore, there must be some kind of system of management for that site. You do not conserve, you do not restore, you do not preserve just for the sake of preserving or conserving or restoring. You're doing it for a purpose. You're doing it so that other persons can en enjoy, can, can understand, can, can be edified, can learn from the structures what they represent, how they came to be built, why were they put here. And what is gratifying is to actually look in the visitor's book at our museum, to actually interact with visitors, visitors from North America, who have told us, hey, we have learned so much about our history by going to the museum. And English people come in and they said, you know, I didn't know that this is how it was. This is my story also. And many Caribbean people come into us and say, thank you. The way you have presented our history is a way that it has not been presented to us before. These things are very gratifying for us. And this, this in fact, is, you know, what it's really all about.